Now let us take some practical uh, example to illustrate uh, the differences between uh, undergraduate uh, or course based education and research education and how some of the uh, misconceptions persist even to a, until the end of the research. So flawed perceptions about research, the role of scholar and his or her guide. Okay. Now here let me uh, quote to you an example, a practical uh, case. Now, one of the institutions in the North Indian uh, universities, uh, the research scholar was defending her thesis. Now, you know uh, the process of uh, research, it involves uh, doing research work, writing it up in the form of a thesis and then the thesis is sent for a couple of experts for their uh, assessment. Now these experts will raise uh, doubts and will uh, tell you about the strengths and weaknesses of your work and or you may have to revise your thesis and so on. So uh, normally a viva or defense is held right after the experts send in their comments. On this viva or defense the research scholar has to defend his or her thesis and answer the questions raised by the reviewers. Now in one such defense. Uh, after the research scholar presented uh, her work, the uh, reviewer commented that uh, he was generally happy with the care that was taken to uh, <coughs> rig up the experiment setup, collect the data and uh, the amount of data that was collected and so on. But there is one thing that uh, the reviewer felt the thesis was weak about and that was in the interpretation. So, while a lot of data has been carefully collected and lot of effort has gone into this, the interpretation part was not very convincing and therefore the reviewer was persistently questioning the scholar on the interpretation. So uh, after some time the scholar uh, uh, you know <coughs> was pushed to the wall and uh, so said uh, the scholar first I will tell you what the scholar said in Hindi because that is how it happened the exchange took place and then I will translate it into English for the benefit of others who may not understand it. The scholar said uh, data lena hamara kaam hai, interpretation guide saab karte hai, isi liye aap guide saab se puchi hai. So the scholar meant that it is my job to collect the data whereas it is the job of the guide to interpret the data at least that is what the research scholar thought and therefore she said that uh, you please ask my guide about the interpretation aspect because uh, I have done my job of collecting the data. Now unfortunately this sort of an in, uh, <coughs> perception about research uh, persists among many that uh, you what is a PhD right you join under a guide the guide tells you everything what courses you should do uh, what problem you should solve and uh, what is the experimental setup you should rig up and so on and uh, you are just like the gui guide's hand and you do what all he asks you to do right and then you collect the data that he or she asks you to collect and then go back and uh, give all this information. So in summary many research scholars feel that they are assistants. Now assistantship is not PhD, please understand this as I have already uh, informed you that a research scholar should take interest in uh, <coughs> deciding what courses he or she should take up what problem he or she should solve, formulate the problem and also interpret the data. So research scholar has to be an independent thinker and a manager of one's own learning. So this is the point that uh, this particular case emphasizes. Okay. Next is the meaning of a thesis. Uh, many times students feel that thesis is nothing but a description, a detailed description, in depth description of something. Now that is not really correct. A thesis is not merely a description but analysis and explanation of a topic. It is a position that you wish to argue about, defend or maintain. Okay? So merely describing something in great detail in very good language is not really a thesis. So I would strongly suggest that you do a Google search on the word thesis and try to see what a thesis means and spend some time in internalizing the meaning of a thesis. So it is some position that you take which you can defend okay? and this position is something 
that is new that other people may not have taken earlier and you are doing all your work to bolster this particular position and uh, defend and show how this position is correct. So, research entails prolonged and arduous labor and needs doubt rather than ready acceptance, extensive reading, persistence points which uh, Professor Sukhatmi has already mentioned and good relations with your guide and fellow scholars. So, I will not discuss this in more detail. Uh, let me uh, quickly uh, make a few more points and then go on to the next topic namely productive thinking. That is what we would like to discuss in detail. Now, research means go back and search until we find that is explore. So, the spirit of research is as Ralph Emerson says do not follow where the path may lead go instead where there is no path. So, that is the spirit. So, someone asked can we uh, just uh, take up things which other people have done and do some incremental work. Well, that is really not research you must do something significantly new. Okay. There are a few other points in this slide, uh, I will not touch upon each of them because uh, you know the slides are with you, you can go through them. So, uh, as we said that we would like to be very practical in what all we do. So, uh, what are the criteria of good research? Okay. So, if you are doing research, you please tick whether your work that you are doing satisfies these criteria, then you know you are on the right track. So, criteria for research, newness is something you are doing new, something that has not been done by others. Truth, accuracy, if you are making measurements, uh, do you know whether they are accurate, how accurate are they, good technique, keen analysis, sound reasoning. So, for instance, when you send your thesis out for review, these are the things which reviewer is going to look at okay, and comment upon. So, it involves questioning, doubting, verifying, sifting, testing and pro proving that which has been handed down, observing and measuring the phenomena of nature. Now, you might think that you know um, all these words you have come across. So, you know what is new about it? See the important thing to note here is we may know many things, but that does not mean we practice them or that does not mean we internalize them. Let me give you another example. I gave you an example of a thesis defense, right? what happened with the research scholar uh, in front of the uh, reviewers. Let me give you one more example of how uh, these uh, things if they are put to us we feel we know, but actually we do not practice. Let us take uh, the sentence uh, or the, uh, the, the fact that uh, research involves measuring phenomena of nature. Uh, let me draw a diagram to illustrate this point. Now, uh, there was a student uh, who was uh, doing project with me. Uh, this student was uh, a teacher from a college, uh, someone um, like you and he was doing uh, an MTech project. Now, uh, the project involved uh, doing something in the area of uh, biosensors. Okay? So, let me first describe uh, quickly what the student was expected to do. So, what I have shown here is the top view of the device that the student was supposed to fabricate. So, uh, do not bother too much about uh, the material to be used and so on, because uh, um, those details are not important for what I want to discuss here. So, this is a, a piece of material, uh, insulating material in which uh, a slot was created something like this by etching and uh, a fluid was to be injected from this port. So, let us call this port A to this port B. So, you inject the fluid and place it here and then uh, the fluid flows from A to B. Now, during the flow, the components of the fluid get separated because the flow happens at different rates for different components of the fluid. Now, <clears throat> the components of the fluid are set in motion by applying a electric field. 
that was the particular device that uh, he was supposed to uh, fabricate and build up. So, uh, he started on the work and then one day he came and said, sir, I have made the device and uh, I have completed the experiment. So, I asked him what all he has done. He described to me this whole setup and then he drew a diagram that I have drawn here actually. And after he did all and then he said that uh, he did find that the components of the fluid moved in response to the electric field applied by the battery here. Okay, then I asked him what is the uh, voltage that you are using on the battery. This is actually a power supply not exactly a battery it was a power supply. Well, he said uh, sir it was somewhere between 0 and 10 volts I did not quite note how much it is. Then I asked him next question I asked him how long did the components take to move from point A to point B. He said sir I did not uh, make note of the time, I did not measure at what rate the components moved and so on. So, like this uh, when I asked him questions about various aspects I found that uh, he did not really understand that meaning of a measurement is actually to get values to some level of accuracy. So, it is not sufficient to say that I have applied some voltage and then the components of the fluid are moving at some rate. No. Now, the student would have done so many experiments during his own B tech and M tech and also he would have handled so many laboratory classes in his own institution because he is a teacher. But he does not, he did not understand or internalize this fact that measuring phenomena of nature means measuring things to some degree of accuracy, right. You must know quantitative values for the various quantities that arise in the that are there in the experiment. So, like this one can actually spend quite some time to show how we might uh, uh, know some of the words that I have put on the slide there, right. I might know all these words, but that does not mean that I am uh, putting all these ideas into practice. So, this is why you must uh, check whether each of these aspects are being put into practice. Let us go to the next slide. Now, a uh, few things about why do research. So, all progress is born of inquiry. Doubt is often better than overconfidence for it leads to inquiry and inquiry leads to invention. So, if, if you really want a progress, if every any nation wants to progress, it must have people who are inquisitive any area of progress it requires inquisitive people right. Ultimately it is the inquiry which leads to progress. Now, here is an interesting quotation of Francis Bacon. If a man will begin with certainties he shall end in doubts, but if he will be content to begin with doubts he will end in certainties. What does it mean? It means that if you take things for granted in the beginning and then start off you will find that many of the things that you encounter do not confirm to your initial assumptions okay? and so you will end up getting lot of doubts. On the other hand, if a person begins with doubts, does not take things for granted, has an open mind and then you pursue those doubts, ultimately you will end up getting certainties. What does, what do certainties mean here? It means that you will end up getting, you will get, you will get to know some aspect of the life that you are uh, pursuing with doubts, uh, you will get to know them to some level of precision or accuracy, right. You will come to know correctly what does it mean. So, if you start with doubts, then you will end, it, end up with certainties, whereas if you start with uh, assumptions, take granted some assumptions, then ad, you will find that you end up with doubts. So, research promotes the habits of logical thinking and organization. So, a person who has done PhD is much more organized thinker than a person who has not done a PhD, right. Now, here are some more uh, motivations for research. You can go through this slide. Uh, the one point that I want to uh, emphasize here that there are two points here um, uh, shown in black color, right. All other things are in blue. So, motivation for research. Uh, enhance career opportunities and earning. While uh, the motivations that are listed here above 
are uh, the more uh, nobler motivations and normally lead to good quality work. It is a fact of life that many people do research just to enhance career opportunities and earnings. So, you want to gain a promotion, right? you want to earn more money and so you do research. And some people do research not having any real aims and not knowing what to do. So, often if people do not have jobs, they are advised that you join some project and do some research. Unfortunately, this sort of things give a feeling that research is something that is of a last resort, right? not something that is lucrative. And it is this kind of motivations which actually uh, are responsible for the poor quality of research. So, unless you have these higher motives, it is not that I am saying that you know you should not use research to develop a career or earn more money, but if that is all what you are looking for and you do research with that motivation, its quality will not be good. So, the one of the reasons why the quality of research is not good is because the research is not being done with the higher motives listed here. So, research and scholarship go together. Here is a, uh, how do I know whether I am a scholar, right? So, here is a quotation by Chanakya, who was a very practical person, practical philosopher. So, what he says, what are the marks of a scholar? How do you know whether a person is a scholar? A greedy person can be won over by money, a proud person by covering before him. So, if you want to win over a proud person, all that you need to do is act humble and so on and then the proud person is won over. A fool by agreeing with him, you want to agree with a fool, all that you have to do is to say that whatever you say is right, okay? but a scholar can only be won over by speaking the truth. So, a scholar is not a person who can be won over either by money or by just merely acting humble before him or her or by just agreeing. right? That is why many times people feel scholars are uh, difficult people to deal with they are not easily pleased. Okay? So, there is a reason for it. Why? Because a scholar can only be won over by speaking the truth. So, only a person who is after truth can be called a scholar. So, here is one more quotation by a well known mathematician. We should not forget that solution of any worthwhile problem very rarely comes to us easily and without hard work. It is rather the result of intellectual effort of days or weeks or months why should the young mind be willing to make this supreme effort? The explanation is probably the instinctive preference for certain values, that is the attitude which rates intellectual effort and spiritual achievement higher than material advantage. So, I have underlined these last few lines. So, this is what this great mathematician says that a person will do good research if his values, his or her value system is appropriate. So, what is the word appropriate here? Appropriate for good research, good work, good intellectual work. So, it says that you must rate intellectual effort and spiritual achievement higher than material advantage. right? If you are more interested in intellectual effort than money, only then you would be able to do good research work. So, um, successful completion of any major project requires integrated application of multiple skills and habits and these are what we are going to discuss in this course. So, this slide uh, shows all the uh, skills that are required for research, thinking, uh, problem finding, then technical communication, experimental skills, modeling skills, time stress management and interpersonal skills. So, these are the things that we are going to develop later on. And the habits are documentation. I have already mentioned you must be taking notes during the course if you really want to get full benefit out of it. You must also document ideas when you come across, when you do reading. I will discuss this point in detail in uh, what to read, how much to read and so on. So, reading and participation in technical meetings. So, <coughs> we come to the end of this session, uh, wherein we wanted to highlight the difference between research and undergraduate education and uh, explain what is the motivation of a course like this. So, no procedure, technique, skill which is relevant to your thesis should be exercised by you there for the first time. You should have practiced it beforehand on a non-thesis exercise, which is therefore going to be less stressful and allow you greater learning. So, what this means is, let us take uh, thesis writing. So, it is not as though uh, you do all your work and then at the end you start writing up your thesis. Actually, you should develop the habit of writing 
you whatever you are doing periodically let us say every two months every three months you should write up what you have done in those two or three months. So, if you develop this habit of writing then when you write your thesis you will actually do a good job of it. So, if when you take up thesis writing there is the first occasion when you have taken up any technical writing then the quality of thesis will not be good. So, in fact, uh, uh, often the guides advise that the students write up papers and get them published before they write the thesis. Many times the research scholars do not follow this advice. Instead, they start writing the papers after writing the thesis, at least some paper, and that is not good. Okay, so, you must be developing the habits over a period of time. So, if you have 10 hours for chopping a tree, spend 5 hours sharpening the axe. So, if you want to develop any skill, it is important to prepare well for it. So, this quotation so shows that if you are asked to chop a tree, then many times what happens is you start hitting the tree with the axe without bothering to check whether the axe is sharp enough, because you feel that you may waste time with by in sharpening the axe, right, since you are given a certain amount of time. Unfortunately, with resource scholars this happens very often, they do not spend time in developing their thinking ability, the writing ability, communicating ability, because they feel that all this is a waste of time, right. They like to do more and more of coursework particularly in their own areas and, uh, and not spend time developing uh, their thinking ability, their communicating ability and so on. So, now uh, in the remaining part of the course, I am going to talk to you and tell you how to develop your thinking, right, how to develop your communication, writing or oral communication, how to develop your ability to read and so on. So, that when you actually take up solution of your thesis problem, it can be done in much, much less time. So, like if you spend 5 hours sharpening the axe, you can cut the tree probably in 6 or 7 hours. So, similarly, if you use the uh, advices and suggestions that are being given in the course for developing various skills, thinking, management, experimentation and so on. then the problem that you take up you can solve much more quickly and much more effectively right and you will be able to communicate your uh, problem much better. Now, what does it mean? It means if you develop uh, communication ability and write up a paper, if you write your paper well the very first time it is likely to get published quickly right. On the other hand if your writing is not good it may go through several rounds of review before it gets published. Now, that is how you spend more time in doing your research if your skills are not developed. Okay. So, with this we come to the end of uh, this part, we have uh, this part has got extended because we uh, were experimenting with our interaction and so on. Uh, I would like to have a brief interactive session. As I said I will uh, uh, go to three remote centers and seek their questions or comments on whatever we have done so far. And then I will move on to the next topic namely productive thinking. So, Savita Engineering College, Tamil Nadu. Why simulation is less accepted compared to implementation or analytical, analytical um, work, yes analytical works. So, the question asked is why simulation is less accepted than implementation or analytical work. Now, uh, first of all uh, I feel that uh, the uh, statement is not very clear. While uh, what simulation means all of us know, it is not clear what you mean by implementation. After all simulation can be one method of implementation. Okay. Similarly, when you say analytical work, when you do simulation ultimately of course, you will have to do some analysis also. So, I think you need to clarify your question a little bit more. Give me an example. To uh, what do you mean by simulation, what do you mean by implementation and what do you mean by analytical work? Sir, I am doing my research in the field of optical. When I simulate in a simulation software, implementation that is the experimental test bed is very costly which is not possible for a research scholar to do. So, I, I would like to uh, publish my things in a simulation environment only. So, is it necessary to go into this experimental bed and uh, implementation part? 
Okay, now I will answer your question. There is no doubt that the ultimate ultimate test of anything is the real experiment. Simulation is only a virtual experiment. Now, in simulation, you make some assumptions about the uh, models. So, whatever output you get out of a simulator depends on the assumptions, uh, models assumed. Now, the models assumed may or may not be correct representation of the real situation. Therefore, whatever you get out of a simulator, unless it is compared with experimental data, there is no way of knowing whether what you have got has any uh, relevance to what happens in practice, whether these results can be uh, of any use. So, usefulness of the result, the practicality of your results can be known only by comparison with experiment. Now, if you do only simulation without comparison with experiment, that work has no value, right? Unless you are uh, trying to come up with, uh, you are trying to introduce a something like a very new concept, which cannot be realized by people in uh, with in any simple way. So, in practice, I do not think that is a kind of uh, concept that you are uh, taking up for simulation. Therefore, it is safe to assume that <coughs> your simulation will need comparison with experimental data. Okay? The point I am trying to say is you may not have the experimental setup to generate the data, but you must collect, the, you must uh, do literature survey and get the data from literature. Now, having obtained the data from literature, you must show that your simulation results match the experiment and you must explain why the models that you have used in your simulation are real. Now, this is where some analysis is coming. right? If you <coughs> simply do some work in which you input some values into your simulator, get some output and get some curves, nice looking curves and nice uh, diagrams, that is not sufficient for publication or that is not significant research. right? So, what I am trying to say is, a good work will combine a simulation and analysis definitely right and it should also involve a comparison of your simulation with experimental data it need not be that you have to rig up the setup if it is very expensive but comparison with experiment has to be there in some form and explanation why the agreement or disagreement with experiment is there this is where some analysis will be required okay uh, have i answered your question yes sir Thank you, sir. Uh, faculty Engineering Avinash Lingam for, in, for women. Professor, can you brief us about quantitative and qualitative research? See, the word qualitative and quantitative uh, is used in the context of all science and engineering uh, work. The quantitative means that I must give some numbers. I must associate with numbers with ideas that I am talking about. Qualitative research means uh, research related to only ideas, concepts, without any uh, measurement, without any dimensions and uh, values for dimensions and so on. So, uh, every research has to be quantitative. It is not sufficient if it is qualitative. Any explanation of phenomenon has to be qualitative as well as quantitative. Now, normally what we do is we start with a qualitative explanation and then go to a quantitative explanation. Right? So, both elements have to be present in that order. So, first qualitative and then quantitative, but quantitative aspect has to be there. You cannot stop with qualitative. So, merely a qualitative uh, discussion means for instance explaining a phenomenon in logical terms without using any equations. Okay? So, when you go to equations, definitely you define quantities and then you want to eva uh, evaluate, you have to assign numbers. So, that is where writing equations and so on, solving equations is a quantitative aspect. Okay? And then finally, getting some numbers and showing that whatever numbers you have got out of your theory match with the numbers that are measured. So, 
uh, both elements have to be there in research qualitative as well as quantitative. 